Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Father God, we come before you here this evening, thanking you for giving us a reason to gather today. Lord, thanking you that the world still recognizes that today is a special day, that tomorrow is a special day. Lord, a day that businesses give us the day off, a day to, to come into your house to worship you. Lord, a day that interrupts the, the mundane rhythms of our own lives. And Father, draws our attention to you and to this world, to what you have done in, in this world on our behalf. Lord, as we spend this evening focusing on the birth of, on your birth, Lord, I pray that you would can help us to understand the reason why, that you came into this world to save us. Lord, you came into this world to give us hope, to give us life, to give us salvation, to give us a meaning and a purpose here in this life. So Lord, we pray that you would help us to find that in, in yourself and your son here today. All these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our first hymn this evening is, if you look on the board, we'll, we'll follow that. I don't have a bulletin for you this evening, but that'll kind of guide you as to where, where we're at with the service here this evening. But our first one is, is hymn number 25 in the blue hymnal, Angels from the Realms of Glory. In the background to this story, the, the author who wrote this poem is a guy by the name of James Montgomery. He was a newspaper man in London, and he ran this poem in his newspaper column back on Christmas Eve, 18, in the year 1816. So if you're doing math, that was a, a long time ago, a little over 200 years ago. But Montgomery was a journalist known for championing the causes of the poor and the downtrodden, as well as foreign missions. And, and in this hymn that he writes, Montgomery refers to the gospel accounts of Christ's birth, but also to the messianic prophecies of the Old Testament, where the Messiah is called the desired of all the nations who would come suddenly to his temple. This time I'll invite Kevin to come up and read the first, first scripture reading for the evening. First reading is from Haggai chapter 2, verses 7. I will shake all nations, and the desired of the nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. And also from Malachi 3, verses 1. See, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. Let me take you back to the context of that first Christmas Eve. There was silence. As Kevin read those passages, those passages were written about 400 years before the birth of Christ, the last of the Old Testament prophecies that we'd have. And not in the, it was silent not in the sense that all was peaceful and calm, as the songs talk about in the world, but that there were no prophets proclaiming messages from the Lord. God's people had endured a period of silence for over 400 years. The words of Haggai and Malachi were delivered to God's people. After they returned from the exile in Babylon, things were starting to look up for them. The temple was being rebuilt, and God had promised to dwell among his people. The prophecy of Jeremiah was coming true. You will seek me, and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. I will be found by you. But yet on this night, it was deafeningly silent. Men's ears had grown numb to the proclamation that the Messiah would come. The promise had been delivered. The desire of all nations will come. The Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come. He was coming. But when? The mundane rhythms of life muted the words of the prophet. I know, I know, my grandparents have been saying that, but I'm 70 years old and I still haven't seen it. When is it going to actually happen? It's a great promise, but that's never going to happen in our lifetime. And the people began to be distraught, and, and worse than distraught, apathetic. And they didn't care. Someday, though, maybe someday it'll happen. And then... Suddenly and unexpectedly, 
The supernatural announcement shatters the silence with the proclamation, God with man is now residing. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. With that in mind, let's sing hymn number 25, Angels from the Realm of Glory. Hymn number 25 in the blue hymnal. is hymn number 22, Angels We Have Heard on High. This traditional French carol puts the music to music the shepherd's story as recorded in the Gospel of Luke. It tells about the angelic chorus, the trip to Bethlehem, the meeting with Mary and Joseph, and the adoration of the baby Jesus. Luke 2, 17 through 20 tells of the reaction of the shepherds after they had been to Bethlehem's manger. They spread the word. And all who heard were amazed at what the shepherds said. And then the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. Sometimes our Christmas season ends with the viewing of the manger and and that's it. We never get to the glorifying and the praising of God, joining the angel chorus and singing the fullness of Gloria in excelsis Deo. Glory to God in the highest. This time I'll have Evan... Come on up here and read. Come on, Evan. And there were shepherds living in, out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were terrified, but the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. The shepherds received a miraculous message. He's here. He's finally come after all of these years of silence. The Savior has been born for us, lowly shepherds. The Messiah didn't come for a specific class of people. He came for all. The announcement reaches the average, ordinary shepherd, the outcast of society who was minding his own business when the earth-shattering announcement came. Heaven has come down. And not only has heaven come down, but heaven has come down to us. With that in mind, join me in singing Angels We Have Heard on High, hymn number 22.
next hymn is hymn number 20, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. In singing this hymn, we not only join the shepherds under the canopy of singing, but we also learn about the Jesus that they proclaimed. We discover who he is and his coming, what his coming means. Charles Wesley's carol is filled with powerful scriptural ideas. A month could be spent exploring each one of these stanzas. But let's focus now on the last four lines. Mild he lays his glory by. Born that man no more may die. Born to raise the sons of earth. Born to give them second birth. These are the reasons why Jesus came. This is why Christmas is so important. So that we would not have to face eternal death. So he could raise us up with him. And so he could regenerate us into children of God. For these and so much more, he deserves our praise. Glory to the newborn king. This time I'll invite Ben to come up and read a scripture passage for us. The next reading comes from Luke 1, verse 35. The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And Galatians 4, verses 4 through 5. But when the time had fully come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under law, to redeem those under law, that we might receive the full rights of sons. It's a head-scratcher for sure. Mary conceived of the Christ child not of natural causes, but by the Holy Spirit. And she gave birth not to an ordinary man, she gave birth to the Son of God. As Paul wrote in Galatians 4, at just the right time. And God knew exactly what he was doing, and this was just the right time for Christ to be born. Christ was born of Mary, submitting himself to the same laws as us, all for the purpose that we might have a heavenly father, that we might be adopted into his family, into the family of God. The angels certainly had something to sing about, and so do we. A peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Veiled in flesh, the Godhead see, the incarnate deity, pleased as man with man to dwell, Jesus, God with us. Light and life to all he brings, to heal, to rid the world of death, to resurrect the flesh and the fleshly, to give us second birth. Glory to God in the highest. He alone could do this, and he alone has done this. Join with me in singing Hark the Herald Angels Sing, hymn number 20 in the blue hymnal.
Children enjoy Christmas more than any other time of the year, and adults also share in that special joy. Away in a manger is usually considered a children's carol, yet its beauty and its power are loved equally by people of all ages. And all of us can pray, I love you, Lord Jesus, stay close to me tonight. The beauty of this carol is the beauty of Christmas. It's simple. Christmas is not the gold and the glitter, the wrappings and the trappings. It's a story of God humbling himself to become a baby born in crude circumstances to a young woman in ancient Palestine. It is what Christmas is all about. Be near me, Lord Jesus. I ask thee to stay. Our next scripture reading, Larry, I'll have you come on up here and read it. Matthew chapter 1, verses 21 through 23. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save the people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth are given to me, and surely I am with you always to the very ends of the age. Now may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all of you. Your The angel says there, you shall name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. He will also be called Emmanuel, meaning God with us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Christmas is a reminder that God is not far off. God is not distant. God is not uncaring, but he is a God who draws near. He isn't a God who abandons us in our time of need, but one who has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. And with that authority and power, he promises to be with us always. And so he is. And he is here. It's a familiar benediction that the church has been using for centuries. The Lord be with you. And I'm sure those of you who have grown up in a Lutheran church would, are holding back your tongue from saying, and also with you. God has come to us in Jesus Christ. And so that's what that saying is all about. A reminder again, the Lord be with you. The Lord has come to be with us. This hymn contains a precious prayer that Jesus would stay close by us forever and love us. Whatever it is that you are facing, Christmas is the reminder that God loves us. Christmas is the reminder that God has not abandoned us, but that he has come to be close to us and to break down the dividing law of hostility between God and man that wall that was brought in by our sin. Because of Christmas, Christ is also near us in death, in loneliness, in sickness, in despair, in happiness, in drought or in flood, in prison or in freedom, at home or at work, in the times when we feel close to God and also in the times when he feels distant. Christ came to be near, and he is near. This time I'll invite uh, Judith and Marjorie to come up and sing Away in a Manger. If you want to follow along, the words are on uh, hymn number 332. Ready? Away in a manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. The stars in the sky looked down where he lay. And the little Lord Jesus asleep on the hay. The cattle are lowing. Baby awakes, but little Lord Jesus, no crying he makes. I love thee, Lord Jesus. 
Jesus looked down from the sky and stay by my cradle till morning is nigh. Be near me, Lord Jesus, I ask thee to stay close by me forever and love me, I pray. Bless all the dear children in thy tender care, and fit us for heaven to live with thee there. They did, they did. That was the first time we practiced it all month, so we dropped the ball on that one. <laughs> Good job, girls. <clears throat> Our next hymn is hymn number 21, A Little Town of Bethlehem. The background to this hymn, Phillips Brooks is the author of this hymn, and three years before writing this hymn, he was celebrating Christmas Eve at Bethlehem's Church of the Nativity, the traditional site of Jesus' birth. And in it, Brooks describes the moment of eternal significance with the arrival of the Savior. Again, the mundane reality of everyday life in Bethlehem. Life continued on as, as normal. I don't know if anyone has been to Bethlehem. I haven't ever been there. But imagine business as usual. But when you stop and pause and think, but what happened here so long ago? How can we continue and live as though nothing happened or nothing changed? So that's what Phillips Brooks is thinking about and wrestling as he writes this song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. This time I'll invite Brendan to come up and do the scripture reading. Micah 5, verses 2 through 5a. But you, Bethlehem, Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will, will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old from ancient times. Therefore Israel will be abandoned until the time when she who is in labor gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the, of the Lord his God, and they will live securely. For then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. This actually happened. This isn't mythology, this isn't a Marvel comic storyline, but this isn't just tradition either. This is history. It has actually happened. It must have been, have been surreal at that Christmas Eve service in Bethlehem, at the very place of Christ's birth. The ground itself isn't anything special. Touching a rock from that soil isn't going to work miracles for you. It's not going to give you a great wealth and prosperity. It's just plain old dirt or gravel or soil or whatever it is that's over there. It's earth. It's earthly. But think of it. The creator of the universe stepped into creation and touched that dirt. The same world in which we move, we live, and we have our being, Christ was here and it's a moment of eternal significance. And, and yet, much like the streets of Bethlehem on that first Christmas day, life goes on as normal. We sin. Our lives resort to apathetic living as though Christ never truly came. And yet here, on this night in Bethlehem, the hopes and fears of all the years are met in Christ. Through this event, God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven here in this earth, in these bodies that you and I have, even today in this world of sin, even in our own lives of sin, God comes to us in Christ Jesus to cast out our sin and to enter in, to birth in us new life, lives of eternal significance, a life not of drudgery, but a life of hope. And so we sing, oh, come to us, abide with us, 
our Lord, Emmanuel. Sing with me hymn number 21, O Little Town of Bethlehem. Hymn number 21 in the blue hymnal. high in the Austrian Alps, a Catholic priest and his organist often talked about the hymns that their church sang, and they agreed that the perfect Christmas hymn had not yet been written. Then just before Christmas in 1818, the church organ broke down, and suddenly they needed a new hymn that could easily be sung by the congregation, even without a booming organ to lead the way. And Joseph Moore, the name of the priest, took up the challenge and quickly wrote the words for Silent Night. He handed them to Franz Gruber, the organist, who said, You found it, the right song, God be praised. And then Gruber wrote a tune that could be effective with the guitar accompaniment. The hymn might have remained an obscure Alpine folk song if it weren't for the organ repairman. A few days after Christmas, he got a copy of the song and began sharing it with others. And soon touring groups began to sing it in concerts, spreading its popularity even further. Today, it's one of the most beloved Christmas songs of all. It's also the song that we have traditionally closed out our service with. This time, I'll invite Samuel to come up and read the last passage for the evening. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in claws and lying in a manger. 
Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts had appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. I hope that the good news of Christ has been made clear for you tonight in song and scripture and, and also explanation. Christ, the Son of God, the Son of Man, has been born, has come, bringing to us good news. And he was born for you. He has won peace with God for your behalf. He comes again to you tonight, not as he did in that first Christmas in, his, in the flesh as a little baby, but he comes to you through his word and through his spirit coming again to offer to you the gifts that he came to bring in his first coming, the gift of peace, hope, love, and salvation to you. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. Jesus entered this world in the flesh to be a sign for you that God loves you and has come to save you. Let us pray. Father God, again, we thank you for the tremendous gift and blessing that Christmas is. Thank you, Lord, that you have come to, into this world to save us from our sin. You've entered into this world, into human history, to redeem us, to give us life and hope and salvation and love, and joy and peace. Lord, a peace that surpasses all understanding. Draw our attention to you tonight and, and in the days ahead as well, Lord. Help us not to take for granted this tremendous miracle that's happened so long ago. Father, again, we thank you for this gift of Christmas, the gift of your Son. And Jesus, we pray that you would enter into us and abide with us each and every one of our days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I'll close with the benediction, and then we'll gather around and, and sing uh, Silent Night by, by Candlelight here. Now may the Lord of peace himself continually grant you peace in every circumstance. The Lord be with you all. Amen. So at this time, I'll invite you to stand up, and we'll try to circle around the sanctuary here and turn your lights on, and we'll sing Silent Night in closing our service tonight. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, holy infant so
Merry Christmas.